I'm Stonetta, and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk about something a little on the personal side. I want to let you in on my dizzy journey that I'm hoping that I'm reaching to an end. On August 1st, 2019, my life changed. I took an airplane ride, actually my first flight ever, to Houston for a chemo certification trip. On the way there was great. On the way back, total different story. As we started to descend, my ear, my right ear in fact, was in excruciating pain. To the point I thought that my eardrum was going to burst. The person that I was with, I could not talk to. The plane felt like it was swirling round and round and round and I told myself this is feels like I am on the longest roller coaster of my life so I just closed my eyes and prayed to God that we got off there safely because in my eyes we were going on a downward spiral and it felt like we were going to crash but that was really not going on. The plane was fine. I was not. So after I got home, I had ringing in my right ear. For a few days, they call that tinnitus. But that soon went away. But what did not go away was the constant dizziness that had started. At first, no matter what I did, if I laid down, if I sat up, Definitely when walking, what little walking I could do, it was bad. But it wasn't the spinning around and around in circles that a lot of people say when they, they have when they have an inner ear problem. This was, it was like I was on a boat, constantly push and pull. I was constantly fighting this back and forth all day long, 24 seven, and it only stopped whenever I sat down. It finally got to a point where it wasn't the so constant. It got to a point where every time I walked, I had to hold on. I felt like I was grazing along on my hallways. I was unable to work. I had to move very slow and I was so debilitated. So I started going to doctors. At first they put me on steroids. I did a couple of rounds of those. I went to my general practitioner, went to urgent cares. I went to two or three visits within the first month. And then I decided I should go to an ENT at two months. So I went to my first ENT and you will see there is many ENTs later in my journey but my first ENT I go there it is an hour and a half away to a big hospital that is well known around my area to be a grand hospital and I wanted to go to a specialist that I thought could knock it out because I was tired of doing that so we go and immediately within the first five minutes after he hears how dizzy I am and the fact that I have a history of migraines and that I have brain fog, he decided, I think that you have vestibular migraines. So a vestibular migraine is a migraine that affects your inner ear, affects your balance, and you do not have a headache. And of course, I had had migraines throughout my life, but those had went away. And I never had a migraine where I did not have a headache. So I was like, okay, this is it. What do we do? Well, first we need to do some testing. So, but um, if this comes back normal, which I think it will, we'll send you to a neurologist after that. But that neurologist is going to want you 
to have this testing done first. It's a type of balance testing. Okay, so we make that appointment. We do the balance testing. It was a very uncomfortable, long, I dreaded it. It was horrible, all the things, but we did it and it came back normal. And so he said, I think it's vestibular migraines. And so I had to come back for another appointment. But what I got instead was I was asked to be in a research study for patients with vestibular migraines. They didn't have a whole lot of study on these type of patients. So he thought it would be grand if I had decided to do that. At this point, it had been two months and I was like, okay, I'm willing to do this. So it was a diet. I tried it. I thought, let me do this without medication. I will gladly do it at two months. So for three weeks, and mind you, I was supposed to do this for three months. I decided enough was enough. This diet just was not going to cut it. And I cut my ties with that doctor. So months and months go by. And I decided I could live with it. This was going to be a part of my life. It was a constant back and forth, rock and rock. But it wasn't horrible. It was nagging and... But one can learn to walk on a boat rather well until it hits you really bad. When seasons change and there's lots of pressure and you have a really bad spell and you have to have someone come get you from work. And then it reminds you that you are not well and something is going on. So I, must, I made myself an appointment with a neurologist that, that I had seen earlier in my life, maybe even 10 years earlier, but he was a local neurologist. I had saw him for migraines before. They had said this was a type of migraine, so why not try him? So I go to the neurologist, and of course he wants to know what is going on, how did this start, how long this has been going on and have I had an MRI? So that was the first thing that he ordered was the MRI. He wanted to rule out that the worst case scenario was not there, that I didn't have a tumor, that I didn't have something like MS, something that could be causing all this dizziness. So we ordered that and that came back fine. Then he decides that he also wants me to do blood pressure readings to see how my blood pressure is running, to see if it goes up or down whenever I'm laying or sitting. You know the drill. If you've had to check your blood pressure like this, you have to check it while you're laying down, check it when you get up, and you have to do it multiple times a day. Well, I do that. He wants me to do this for two weeks, and unfortunately, I have on the low side of blood pressure, not bottom out low, but low, I mean, functioning low. And so I have trouble with getting my blood pressure to check on a monitor that you would buy at the drugstore. Sometimes, and it has my whole life, it won't pick up, it won't read, you get an error. And because of that, he decided that my blood pressure was bottoming out. And so I needed to be on a pill to raise my blood pressure. So we try that. So I tried the medication for a month. I go back for a follow-up and it is still not affecting my dizziness. Maybe I'm not as tired, but I'm still dizzy. So we increased the pill, but I took that four months after that still is not working. So we're back to square one. During this time, I have also switched my family doctor to another family doctor because 
the family doctor that I was seeing at the time wasn't, in my opinion, very helpful. And I just knew it was time for a change. So again, another doctor. In the meantime, I do get on some medication for anxiety and depression, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there are so many people out there that deal with mental health and there's so much stigma and you get to a point where you think that you're weak. But I needed that. I had so much anxiety and so much depression because my life had been changed so much. It was taken away from me and I had to be on something and it wasn't until I changed my family doctor and got on for something, something for anxiety and depression that I felt like somebody was actually listening to me. The next doctor that I went to was another ENT in a different city in another large city who was supposed to be a top ENT, top doctor within a certain span of time, had 40 years experience and I'm thinking, he's gonna figure it out. He's going to help me. So I go there and we start over and he wants to do more tests. And I understand that doctors want to do their own tests, but it's the same test I've had over and over and mind you, I've also been to physical therapy who also does the same type of same type of test as I've had at the first ENT and now this ENT and now this is my third round of tests, the same ones. And long story short, I've yet, after three trips to that ENT, I hit another dead end. He says, I'm sorry, but I just don't know what to do. Have you tried vestibular therapy? Which is in like a physical therapy. I'm like, okay, let's try it. You know, at this point, it had been over two years of constant dizziness and I was so frustrated. I did not care what we did. So I tried vestibular therapy. I won't go into detail about vestibular therapy because that did not work. So our next doctor that we go to is yet again, a different neurologist. And my family doctor suggested that I go to a neurologist again. I needed to go to a neurologist in a big city connected to a university type setting where they could consult with other doctors if they did not know. So I make an appointment, wait months to get it, and I get there and that physician at first was like, you know, most doctors don't take patients that just come in for dizziness. And at first I was about to lose it <laughs> because I was like, no, you don't understand. My life has stopped because the September before I went to her, I had a tremendous episode, relapse, whatever you want to call it. And I had not been able to work since. And I was like, no, you have to see me. You have to understand that this is not just dizziness. Like there is something significant going on. So she did put me on something for migraines. This is the first doctor that said, let's try it. But she said, I don't feel like this is it, but we'll try it. 
But what I want you to do is I want you to go to, to a hearing institute in the same bigger city that I just went to. And so I was like, but I've already had my ears tested multiple times. I just, I don't know how it could be my ears. They're telling me it's not my ears. And she's saying, trust me, if anybody's going to figure this out, it's going to be them because they are specialists in dizziness and anything that's going on with your ear. So I was like, okay, why not? Let's go. So as I'm leaving, I call and they had an appointment like the very next week. This was the fastest appointment I'd had in over two years. And I could not believe it. It was like it was meant to be. I go there and they were amazing. Within five minutes, very descriptive questions, in-depth questions. She had pages of information and she listened very closely to what I had to say. And within five minutes, she says to me, I think I know what you have. I think you have a perilymph fistula caused from the airplane, from the pressure on the plane as you come down. And I'm telling you guys, I could have cried. I did cry a little bit. I had to hold it in because I didn't want to just cry the first time I met somebody. But I felt like that God had sent me there. And I knew that that was the place that I was supposed to be. So Dr. Sarah there did lots of testing and we did all of the trials of maneuvers over and over because we had to prove that that was not going to work. And we had to do lots of testing including a fistula test to see if I had that in my right ear and it came back positive. So we did that test and so she sends me to the ENT that is hopefully going to fix me. So two months later, I get the appointment and I go and we wait a couple hours and he comes in and immediately he starts talking about the surgery that he can do for my right ear for the fistula. And I was elated that this was going to happen. I was going to get my life back because at this point, again, this has been three years and I had not worked since September of the year before. So we go through his little process there and he says he wants a CT scan before we do the surgery. And so he wants to see the anatomy of my head and of my ear. And I'm like, okay, he just wants to see the anatomy of my ear before he goes in because at this point, you know, we're gonna go in through the ear canal and maybe he just needs to see that. So I have the CT scan done locally. I do that and I had to wait a month for a phone appointment. And I got the results from my CT scan and I really did not know that there was results to be had. I just thought we're getting a, a, point, a, a scheduled date for the surgery and that's gonna be it. But when he calls me on the phone, I get results. He says, Miss Ogden, I'm calling to tell you results of your CT scan. We did see something, but it's not of your right ear. We saw something on your left ear and I was shocked. I was here alone 
It was over the phone. And I'm like, you're telling me after all this time, there's something wrong with my left ear? But my right ear was the one that was in so much pain. And my right ear was where they found the fistula. That was where we had the positive fistula test. Mind you, you, you cannot see, can't determine a true fistula until you get in there. So there's not a 100% way to know that you have one until you get in there. But we had that positive test. And he said, you have an anatomic abnormality. And at this point, I'm still in shock. And I don't know what that means. And I was this upset. You can imagine. So I go in for yet again, more testing. He wants more testing done and he wants to repeat the fistula test and he wants it done there from his audiologist. I go and I do the test. His audiologist was taken back. She says that this matches the CT scan and as far as she can remember, this is one of the worst cases of the condition that I have that she's seen in a long time. And so I'm like, okay, this is it. You can tell me that's on my left ear at this point. I don't care. Cut off my ear. I don't care. Please fix me. So I go in for my appointment with that doctor and he says, you have a condition called SCDS and it's called Superior Canal Dishinge Syndrome. And I may have missed something, but those are the abbreviations. And it is a rare syndrome that I unfortunately was probably born with and it starts out as a thinning of a bone and over time it could have been from trauma or your brain, the vibrations of your brain basically dissolves the spiral or at least a hole or sometimes even dissolves a portion of the bone of the spiral sections in and in my case, one of the spiral sections of my ear. So therefore, fluid that normally goes around in circles is bulging out into the membrane. And, you know, I do have a hole in my ear, just not on the right side and nowhere where we thought it was going to be. So I know this has been long and I appreciate everybody for watching if you are still here but i felt like i owed it to you all for like an explanation of why that i'm not going to be here and also wanted to let you in a little bit on my life a little bit besides like the cooking and other things the simple living type things i hope that i can do updates but today is october the third and October the 6th, I am having a pretty decent surgery. Um, I would not consider it a minor surgery. Uh, they are going in through my head, behind my ear. They will scrape down to where they need to go through the temporal bone, make a new bone, lift up my brain, and fill it in. Then it has to harden for eight weeks. Kind of like it would if you had a cast. So I'm not really going to see a whole lot of improvement likely. And it may get worse before it gets better um, until maybe Christmas. But I am finally have some hope that I am going to have a normal life. I'm still not out of the water. Of I may still have to have... Um, a fistula repair it this does not cure me um in the right ear 
but we are going to hope and pray and I would love it if you all could pray for me and just remember me in your thoughts and prayers but I just wanted to let you guys know that it's a potential that I might not be here um, in the next coming weeks. I'm hoping again that I can do some updates here and there, um, but I just don't know. But I also wanted you all to take something away from this. If you have learned anything from me today, I want you to remember that you are your own best advocate. Be your own health advocate. If you have something that's going on and this doctor and this doctor and maybe even this doctor tells you that they don't know, you're hitting wall after wall, don't give up. There is a doctor out there somewhere. I know that God sent me to the Hearing Institute. He gave me Dr. Sarah, and though she is not the one that is going to fix me, she gave me hope before anybody else did of getting my life back because she listened to me. She was the first doctor other than my new family doctor who listened and understood that I needed some help mentally. But she was the first doctor that actually listened to everything that I had to say and did not get tunnel vision. So don't give up on finding what is wrong with you if you are in a similar situation where you have something going on and nobody seems to know. But thank you all for watching and I hope everybody has a blessed day. And don't forget to come back and see me and hopefully I won't be gone too long. Thank you guys for watching.